Praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Pastor Leal, for the good advice. In fact, we used to travel every month, and in fact, uh, twice a month. So I told my wife that uh, this uh, year, when we came back after the surgery and all that, we are going to go in the alternate month. We're going to take uh, every month a break, and then we're not going to be traveling every month. Just take because sometimes it can be very, very extensive. Uh, we just came back from India. India is a very, very challenging place. It's not an easy place. And the last place we were in uh, Mumbai, very, very hot place. And uh, it was it was about uh, 33, 34, but it felt like 45. Humidity, and even you get into indoor, it is so hot. Hotness makes you so tired. You know, 10 minutes, you call it. It's so tiring. But uh, thank God it's so good. And also thank God the Brother Super that was with us for uh week in or uh, Orissa. We had a great time. Praise God. But uh, God is doing great things uh, in India, raising up many work, many revival, but the churches are closing. Persecution is so high there right now. In fact, when my wife went and tried to go in, uh, went in this time, they let me go, but they questioned my wife. You know, they integrated her and also uh, Sister Hawa, I believe. And she did not answer. She was so tired. Now arriving at almost one o'clock in the midnight in the airport, they said, you are coming to India right now. Do you, where are you going to church on Sunday? You know, just like that. And she said, she was stunned. And she said, if you're coming to India, you must have a missionary visa. If you don't have a missionary visa, you're in a big problem. So they called the other officer. She didn't even answer a word. Then I stepped in and I said, is there any problem? He said, no, no, no. We are talking to her. We call you if you need you. So a lot of problem. And finally, you know, they question and question. And finally, they do not, uh, you know, uh, find any evidence. And they say, okay, we'll let you go inside. But only you can stay there for 90 days. And that's good enough. We're not going to go for 90 days, you know. We just go in there for about <laughs> three weeks to do the work. But every place we go, you know, they have, uh, if you can give me a bit base, it'll be better. It's very sharp. And, uh, you know, every place we go, we told them no posters. No leaflets, don't put anything out. So we had um, three, uh, two major crusades and one uh, anniversary, but no, uh, what do you call, uh, no leaflets was given, no uh, banners was put out. The only, only banner they put was behind the stage where we were preaching. And, uh, you know, uh, we had a great time, praise God. And uh, in um, Andhra Pradesh, where Brother Naidu came from, you know, we had a big crusade for three days we had closed about 3,500 people. Open field, open field. Um, we could not have a field uh, to, to have a meeting, but the pastor had a plot of land just next to the house. And every night they have hired 400, you know what is auto is? The tutut. Thailand, they call tutut. So India, they call auto or ato. Ato, they call so every night they will come by 400 and uh, will be jam packed, you know, from the from the place. I wish I had a clip I can show you, but we had all Hindus, uh, we had the Trinitarians, we have some of the oneness people that gathered the place. Uh, we had a great time, and by the time we finished, they fed the people, fed all the people, and they went back home. It's a jam, massive jam. We cannot even leave out, and by the time we leave the place, it was almost two o'clock in the morning. So. It was going on every night. Uh, I give you the the, uh, the exact uh, uh, results of that. Praise God. After that, we were in Orissa with Brother Sister Super. We, they were there with us. We had a great time. It was a 12th anniversary of a church. When I went there 12 years ago, I think uh, we dedicated the church. And some of you know Brother Subrat. He is a oneness apostolic. He's not a UPC, but oneness apostolic. And he have grown the work from about... Uh, Few people, uh, four or five people right now, they're growing to close to about 400 old people. And uh, they are in the expansion. A lot of churches are coming. A lot of unbelievers are coming in. Uh, we had a great, great anniversary celebration. Praise God. And um, finally, uh, the last meeting was we're in uh, Mumbai. Mumbai, we had a, what do you call, encounter Jesus in a big auditorium. We had almost about 1,200 people in the auditorium. And we had uh, oneness UPC people, oneness people, a lot of uh, what do you call a uh, Trinitarian pastors. We had about 29 uh, Trinitarian pastors 
that came for the meeting. Praise God. And uh, so many people got the Holy Ghost. I don't know, Pastor Leo, no, uh, uh, James Chaco, or Chaco James. He's a very elderly man. You see, he saw that we were there. He took us to his place. He built a very nice resort. He traveled to America, raised millions of dollars. He built a resort. It's called Almost Heaven. So we were there, Almost Heaven. We were at Almost Heaven, praise God. And that place was equipped with Bible school, you know, training center, a church was there, you know, and they have so many things go going on there. He was about 70 over years old. He's a very close friend of Brother Harry Season. And we met his son. Uh, his son was a lawyer, advocate. We had a great time there. And they were they came for the meetings. But out of the meeting, this is what we, we, we got the result. 2,800 2, people filled with the Holy Ghost, were healed, were, you know, delivered. This is the re result we got. 16 deaf ears opened, 38 vision eyes were, were healed, blindness were healed, 12 paralysis got up and walked, 18 cancer healed, 43 tumors and cancer disappeared. I mean, God did a great work in there. We're still receiving uh, reports from all this crusade. I wish I can show the clip, I could not. Uh, we had uh, one of the pastors, Pastor Subrat's uh, mother was, uh, you know, could not go to urine. She had a cancer you know, in the uterus, and they have to operate the uterus, and they had a cathara, the cathara, I think so they call it, a bag, where she will have to urinate, but she's a Hindu lady. She came for the service on that day, and we prayed, Brother Super was there too, we prayed, and the next day she came, she, she, she testified there were no pain. God took away all the pain, and she could urinate as normal. There's no way she could urine because they have all closed up everything because of the operation. But God made a way. The same miracle also happened in Mumbai uh, to one of the uh, pastor's wife. But God did great things. Thank you for praying with us. Thank you for, you know, lift, lifting up the work, the nation. We are living in the last of the last days. So before Jesus come back is the time that God is gathering his bride all over the world. And we, P-O-K-L, impacting the nation through your prayers, through your fasting, Amen. Only eternity will reveal what you are doing. Praise God. Not only here locally, not only in Malaysia, but also all throughout the end of the world. Praise God. So the day will come, you'll hear the sound of Jesus saying, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Praise God. We want to hear, how many of you want to hear that? We all want to hear that. And we are part of a church, not a big church, not just a layback church, but we are a progressive church. We are going forward in the harvest field. We are, you are involved in praise God with every word. And we thank God for that. Praise God. Amen. Why don't we stand right now? I want to bring the word of God. Thank you, Pastor Leah, for having us back. In fact, we are very, very exhausted. And my wife, she said, I don't want to do anything after service. I'm just going to go back home. We've been uh, sleeping for the past two days and still got not, not got out of this uh, tiredness. Because, you know, by the time we got back to the hotel, it was 2 o'clock in the morning, and Malaysia time about 5 in the morning. And getting up about uh, 11, 12 of Malaysian time, we still have not got over the timing yet. We're still struggling, but I think in another week we'll just get over it. Praise God. But let's turn to the Word of God this morning today. Uh, if you turn to the book of Genesis chapter 24, it's a long read. Please be patient with us for the reading of the Word from verse 10. To verse 22, praise God. The Bible said, Genesis 24, verse 10 to verse 22. The Bible says, And the servant took ten camels, and the camels of his master, and departed for all the goods of his master were in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia, unto the city of Nahor. And he made his camels to kneel down without the city by the well of the water at the time of the evening, even the time that woman... Uh, the women go out to draw water. And he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Behold, I stand here by the well of the water and the daughters of the man of the city came out to draw water and let it come to pass that the damsel, the young lady to whom I shall say, let down the pitcher, I pray thee, um, that I may drink, and she shall say, drink, and I will give thy camels to drink also. Let the same be 
she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac, thereby shall I know that thou hast showed kindness unto thy master. And it came to pass before he had done speaking that behold, Rebekah came out, who was born of Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with a picture upon the shoulder. And the damsel was very fair. The Bible says she was very fair and pretty to look upon. A virgin, neither had any man known her. And she went down to the well and filled the pitcher and came up. And the servant ran to meet her and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. And she said, Drink, my Lord. And she has to haste it and let down the pitcher upon the hand and gave him to drink. And when she had gone, done giving drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels until they have done drinking. And she hasted and emptied her pitcher into a throw. And ran again into the well to draw water and drew for all of his camels. And the man wondering at her beheld his peace and with whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. And it came to pass as the camels had done drinking, the man took golden earrings of half a shekel weight. It's a lot of gold. And two bracelets for her hands and ten shekels weight of gold. And said, whose daughter art thou? Tell thee, I pray thee, is there room for thy father's house for us to lodge in. And she said, I'm the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Milcah, which she bare unto me. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. I know this morning, everything is just low in a low key. We started in a very low key. Everything is just tail. But the presence of God is here in a very special way. I might be tired. You might be tired. We're exhausted physically. But amen, praise God. When God begins to move in, we can be, amen, and enriched, encouraged, and powered by his presence. Here is a story that you can read about Abraham. Now, Abraham was the forefathers, and you know that the Israel had forefathers. Even today in Israel, if you go, they'll call the name of Abraham as their father. Praise God. And Isaac and Jacob, the Bible will say when Abraham was old, he was so concerned that his son Isaac would find the right person to get married. It's not anybody that he, he wants to allow the son to marry, but somebody that will know his God. That's why, amen, praise God, Christian, we must be careful who we partner with. It's not just simply that because you're Christian, we have all kind of freedom that we can get married to whomever that we wish. The Bible says that when we walk in the light, we shall be yoked together with somebody in the light. The Bible says that we don't have nothing to do with somebody in the darkness. So Abraham was very careful to choose the daughter-in-law. Praise God. And here he sends a servant to look for, the, for this lady. Amen. Praise God. In a far, far land, he did not only send, but he sent a troop with his servant. You talk about tens and fifteen and twenty of camels that were carrying golds and silver. They were carrying precious uh, stones, uh, treasures of the earth. Because Abraham was not just a millionaire, he was a billionaire. Do you believe if I tell you that Abraham was a billionaire? He was one of the richest men on the face of this earth at the time. He possessed thousands upon thousands of camels and goats and sheep on the face of this earth. He was the richest man. He can buy anything that he wished to. But he was a man that feared God. Hallelujah. The Bible says he feared God. And then, praise God, he said, a time came, he said, Let's go and look for a daughter for my son. And he sent forth amen, a servant to go and scout the earth. And as a servant was going to look for somebody, I believe that everyone is here when God began to call us. We are not just accidentally born into the church. We have been found by the hand of grace of God. Do you believe with me? You are not here just by chance or choice, by accident, but God began to find you and put you in a place that you can grow in him. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's why when you are founded in the truth, you are planted in the truth, we should remain and be faithful where God has placed us. We need to be faithful on the things that where God has entrusted us. Not even praise God, amen, going to and fro, but be 
faithful. And Abraham has been faithful, praise God, serving his God. And not only that, he began to teach there's only one God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And you shall love the Lord with all your heart and mind and soul and strength. And this is what he's been teaching to Isaac. And imagine Isaac has been growing in the teaching of his mother and the teaching of the father, knowing there's only one God. There's no three God there, but only one God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. We thank God. Hallelujah. For the teaching of the forefathers for the teaching of every parent, sir, for grounding the truth into us, praise God. When Isaac was growing up, amen, he knew that he gave come into a teenager. Amen, Abraham know it's time for us to look for a bride. Praise God, hallelujah. And Isaac was just, was a young, fine man, a fine young man. He was growing in the Lord. And Abraham said, as long as I'm alive, I'm going to find the right person. And praise God. But more than what Abraham has desiring, God has a plan in the life of Isaac. Because out of Isaac will come a remnant, will come out a, a generation, praise God, that will impact the world. That will have a Jacob and will have Joseph and will have the 12 tribe, praise God. Do you think it's an accident that God found Abraham and Isaac and Jacob? It's not an accident that God found you. When God found you, he's already numbered your generation to come. Praise God. But Abraham has to be faithful. Isaac have to be faithful. Jacob and Joseph have to be faithful to God. If they are not faithful, then whatever God is placing upon them will be cut off. That's why today we don't see too many people in the church today. They come, they've been baptized, they're filled with the Holy Ghost. And then after about maybe six months, one year, three years, four years, they dropped off. So what happened when they dropped off? When they dropped off, the blessing they're supposed to carry to the next generation. And the next generation have been cut off. Praise God. And that's why so many today, a lot of young people are struggling out there. Because the mistake of the forefather have done. We cannot afford to do the mistakes. I mean, praise God. What the Bible has warned us about. But we need to carefully walk in the precept in the word of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Bible say Abraham, and Abraham is a shadow, was a shadow of God. He was looking for a bride. The bride is a church. Praise God. Rebecca resembled the church of the living God. And praise God, here was Abraham. When Abraham called Isaac, he said, I want you to go and look for a bride for my son. And Rebecca was a church. You have no idea where the church is going to be. But he said, whoever the church is going to be, whoever that bride is going to be, that bride is going to receive many blessings. He's going to receive many gifts. So Abraham began to fill the camels, fill the camels with gold and silver and began to fill with great ornaments and stones and rubies and all kind of uh, uh, pearls and all kind of... Uh, precious things and load it up and the servant said master where are you sending me to abraham said i'm sending all these things to a bride praise god hallelujah come on lift up your hands praise god to the lord hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you lord hallelujah people of god we are the bride of the living god we are the bride of the living God. When God began to send his word, the servant was the word. Abraham was like God. The word, amen, praise the servant. The servant was the word. When the word came to you, the Bible say, praise God, the word of God will not go forth and come back and void. When the word began to touch you, and then sometimes you struggle, you say, God, how can I forget? How can I just let go of my sins and my, my things I've been living for in the past? How can I let go of the things and this and that? You begin to struggle and God help you with that. And somehow the word begin to touch you and you say, I want to be obedient to the word. Praise God. When you are obedient to the word of God, what happens? We have life and life more abundantly. Praise God. The Bible say that even praise God. The birth of the church was given on a revelation of Jesus, of who Jesus was. The truth and salvation has to combine together. Praise God. When 
The servant was bringing, amen, this, all this gold, all this silver, everything to a woman, to a lady, a young lady. He has no idea how this lady looked like. But it all depends on obedience. God has to give a sign through obedience to a lady, the woman, a young woman that will say, I'm willing to sacrifice my time. Amen. My resources. Amen. My effort to feed somebody. Hallelujah. That's what God is looking for. When the word comes to you, the word will not return back in void. But when you say, Lord, your word is more powerful, like a two-edged sword. I'm ready to give my life to you. I'm ready to repent. I'm ready to baptize. I'm ready to receive the Holy Ghost. Then God knows here is a bride. Hallelujah. Here is a bride. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. The Bible says many shall be called, but few are chosen. Only few that have been chosen by the hand of God through the obedience that can inherit, amen, the possession and the treasures that God is bringing to you. But look at us, all of us, when you have been baptized, when you have filled the Holy Ghost, look at the treasures that we carry. Look at the peace, the joy, the love. Look at all the fruit of the Spirit. Look at the covering of God. Look at the strength of God. Look at the blessings of God that God gives. It is like God has given all the blessing in the camel to the church today. The camels brought the blessings and unloaded into the church. And we receive it through our obedience. Some of you, we came to the church, nothing, zero. We become zero today. Somebody said, no, uh, we are zero without Jesus, but hero with God. Praise God. Look at yourself, how much blessing that God has given to us. Look at the blessing that your children carry. Praise God. But it comes through an obedience, praise God. God is sending his sign to the church through sending the camels. That is, and praise God, the word to the church that we will receive the word of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Can you lift our hands to the Lord? We're going to clap our hands to the Lord right now. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Finally. Somebody saw the camel. Rebecca saw the camel. She went to the servant and she said, she did not ask a word. She said, let me give some water to that servant. She took the water and began to give the servant. And not only that, she said, sir, if you come back, I'm going to feed every camel that you brought here today. You know how much a camel can drink? I think in my previous teaching, I told this. One camel can drink 40 gallons of water. 40 gallons. And they had minimum, they had at least 100 camel on that day. And she's supposed to feed 4,000 gallons of water to the servant. That's a lot of work, people of God. That is a lot of work. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Come on, come on somebody say, God help us today. Praise God. Lift your hands and say, God. Help us today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. When God began to find the church, the church has a responsibility. We cannot run from our responsibility. You cannot receive the Holy Ghost and come to service on a Sunday, on a weekday, and a seat on a Bible study and do, do nothing about it. But we have a responsibility to feed somebody else. It takes a lot of sacrifice. It takes a lot of effort. It takes commitment, praise God. It takes a lot of commitment, praise God. But when you are ready to do it, God will strengthen you. God will strengthen me. Praise God. The provision has already been made, but we need to feed the camels. Praise God. That is a commission of the church today. Hallelujah. When God sent his presence, God sent his mighty spirit upon us, that spirit does not only reconcile us to be a heavenly citizen, praise God. Hallelujah, praise God. When we went to India, we, when we produced the passport, they chopped that. They know that we are the citizen of Malaysia. 
And when they saw we are the citizen of Malaysia, they salute us, you know, from, from Malaysia. But we have a higher citizenship today. That is a citizenship of the kingdom of heaven. Praise God. When you've been baptized in Jesus' name, when you've been filled with the Holy Ghost, God gives you a new identity. Praise God. It's called the heaven's identity. You carry a new name. You carry a new, praise God, purpose in our life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. What the Bible says, the Bible says that I will build my church upon this rock and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. The camels were carrying these precious gifts, every precious gift. Both they, they, what they brought was, even praise God, the truth and salvation. The church was Rebecca. Rebecca began to understand her assignment that God had given to her at the time. She could not see, but by faith she grabs it. She said, this is an opportunity that I can able to take on the assignment of God. She said, I'm not going to let go even though I get tired. You know, people, 4,000 gallons of water is a lot of water. You can get exhausted and tired. A young lady, a young woman that can get exhausted. But she said, I'm committed. Amen. To feed what God sent my way. Come on, somebody. Can you just tell? I'm committed to feed somebody that God is going to send my way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm speaking to somebody today. Praise God. And here is a re revelation. When Rebecca was feeding the souls of this, all these camels, she did not expect anything. She said, I'm just doing it in a good will and let them go away. Amen. Praise God. But you know what? These camels were carrying a lot of treasures. They were carrying a lot of treasures, and these treasures was meant to be for Rebecca. In today's, in today's count, they say it's more than $12 million. That's how much treasures the camels were carrying. And they were carrying into Rebecca's house, and Rebecca has no idea that she was about to receive a blessing from God. But all that she was doing was obedient to the word of God, obedient to the voice of God. Hallelujah, praise God. If you want God to bless you, find a lost soul. Find a lost soul. And let me tell you again, find a lost soul. When you begin to reach out to a lost soul, God is going to open up a treasure of heaven and pour out a blessing upon you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus said, praise God, cast your hook on the, on, on, on the pond and the first fish that you find, you'll find a gold coin in his mouth. Praise God. Hallelujah. The souls that God is bringing to you and sending to you will carry a gold coin. I'm not speaking about a gospel of prosperity, but I'm speaking about the blessing of provision for your obedience. When you obey God and you be faithful to God, don't say that I am living for God and God have not blessed me. Look at me, but ask yourself, what have I done for another soul, for the kingdom of God? If we have done something, we cannot deny what God will bring to our life. Praise God. How many of you have been blessed by God? Come on, praise God. You have reached out to God. You have ministered to God. You have poured yourself to God. You have your vessel to God. And then in return, you know the blessing was coming. There were camels that God sent your way that you cannot deny. That's why we can tell to God today, Lord, you are great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. When these, these people in Andhra Pradesh, they were, you know, bringing the villages. You know, we helped them with the transportation. They could not help, but we helped them. So they were bringing about almost 1,000 of people every night. And after the service, you know, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And they've been receiving healing. And after that, they were feeding them. It takes a lot of things. And we were 
All these are village people. They are they have no resources. They're not rich people. They are poor people. And here was a pastor that feeding these poor people through obedience. But you know what? When the time is coming right now, all these poor people that have given their life are getting baptized in Jesus' name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Every week, hundreds of them are getting baptized. And not only that, they are getting into a church. They are ready to build a church for the pastor right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You cannot deny the blessings of God when you serve God faithfully. Hallelujah. That is a promise of God today. When God began to pour out himself to you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Now, if you look at verse 22, if you look verse 22, the Bible say, and she hasted and emptied a came into the well to draw waters and draw all for all his camels. And the man wondering at her held his peace to which God has made his journey prosperous or not. And he came to ask as the camels has done drink. The man, she did not ask for this. She did not say, give me something. You know, some of us like that. Lord, you know that I have done for you this and I've done that. I've, I've labored for this. Lord, you need to bless me. You don't have to ask God to bless you. He knows that he needs to bless you. He will bless you. Praise God. Everything that we have done for God, it will not be shortchanged. Amen. What the blessings did you carry? It will be passed to your children and children's children and the next generation. The Bible says the man took a golden earring of half a shekel weight and two bracelets for her hands of ten shekel weight of gold. This was just the beginning of what God was showing to Rebecca through a kindness that he is already pouring out his grace and his favor on Rebecca. Praise God. That fed all the camels. Guess where the camels were going? To Rebecca's house. It was going to Rebecca's house. It was not going back to Abraham's house. It was not sent back to Abraham's house, but it was coming to Rebecca's house. Come on, somebody. Can you stand right now? Hallelujah. We want the musician to come up. Praise God. I don't think Susan is able to sing today, but even praise God. Hallelujah. We want the musician to come up. We want to sing a song. Praise God. Let's make this time right now a time of dedication. When God began to find us and put us in the place and that we need to commit ourselves in faithfulness, not only faithful to serve him, but also faithful to serve one another, to serve the souls. Praise God. Would you lift your hands right now and pray with us? Jesus, hallelujah. I'm here to tell somebody the camels are coming. The camels are being sent by God to you. Hallelujah today. The camels are coming your way. What are we going to do about the camels? Are we going to just let it to pass by and say, let somebody take them away? Let somebody will take the blessings. Or are we going to get hold of the camels and say, it is my assignment today. It is my commitment today. My God, I want to feed somebody. I want to just reach out to somebody. I want to bless somebody with whatever God has poured out upon me. Come on, lift up your hands to the Lord right now, all over this place. Mm -hmm.